Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the topic of wealth, and I want to ask the question of what is wealth? I often hear people talk about wealth as if it only pertained to things that have a dollar value, like the money in your bank account, or the value of your home that you own, sort of all the stuff that you own that can be quantified. But I like to think about wealth a lot more broadly, and I think that there are a lot of aspects of wealth that can't easily be quantified, but that still have value, and that in some cases even directly relate to things that do have a dollar value. I also think there are a lot of types of wealth that we often take for granted, and I want to draw attention to some of those, both as examples and so that you can be aware of them. One of them is clean and safe drinking water you will become very aware of how important this is the minute it's cut off, like if you've ever had your water shut off. And there are a lot of parts of the world where there isn't clean and safe drinking water available to everyone, and in those areas people are acutely aware of how important it is. Another example of something that we may take for granted is quiet. So for example, I'm recording a video right now. If there were something really loud happening out my window, I wouldn't be able to record this video. Uh, and say I was doing other work, if there was a sufficiently loud noise, it might be hard for me to concentrate regardless of what I'm doing. So peace and quiet is something that we may take for granted, but it's a form of wealth and it can directly translate to financial benefit because uh, it's necessary for us to have a certain level of quiet in order to do many types of work. So now I want to talk about wealth creation. People often talk about wealth creation when they talk about uh, policy for how to structure the government, how to structure the tax system, what laws are good or bad to pass. And I think it's really great to think about wealth creation, but I think that sometimes in American society at least, we think about it in a way that's a little bit narrow. I want to give an example of something that I think creates a great deal of wealth, and it's not an example people usually give, and that is picking up trash in your neighborhood. I think that cleanliness is a form of wealth. Not only does it make a neighborhood pleasant to live in, but it can actually affect property values and even crime. Like, if someone's considering buying a house in a neighborhood, they're going to want to, most, in most cases, I think they're going to want to live in a neighborhood and in a house that is surrounded by generally clean and well-maintained areas. So, if you're picking up trash regularly in your neighborhood, you're not only creating wealth for yourself and others by making it more aesthetically pleasant, but you may actually be helping to boost and sustain the property values in your area. So that's an example of wealth creation that I think is often uh, neglected in the dialogue about it. A lot of times people talk about natural resource extraction as it involves uh, wealth creation. Like an issue here in Pennsylvania is fracking, it's the extraction of natural gas from shale deposits underground. And there's a lot of evidence that fracking causes some environmental problems, including contamination of groundwater, which gets back to that thing that we often take for granted, clean and safe drinking water. But at the same time, it generates this natural gas resource, and I'm actually benefiting from it right now. I have gas heat, and I pay a heating bill each month, and the price of gas is very low right now, so I'm getting a benefit from this fracking practice. But I'm very concerned about this potential environmental damage. I would like us as a society to look for forms of wealth creation that don't impose on other people, uh, that don't destroy other people's types of wealth. I'm going to conclude with just one last example. One thing that I've seen over the course of my life, especially in the past 20 years or so, is that people have moved away from using rakes to clean up their lawn, and moved towards using leaf blowers. The leaf blower might be faster, so in a sense it's sort of creating wealth for the person using it. It's or like making them use up less of their wealth. They have this extra time because they're able to sort of blow the leaves out of their yard quicker. But they're really friggin' loud! And I gave this example earlier. If someone is using a leaf blower out my window, there's no way I could record a video like this one I'm recording now. And they're so friggin' loud that even if someone's like three houses down or across the street, it probably would be too loud for me to record a video even with my window closed. And I think that's a problem because they're like imposing on me. So using a rake 
is, I think, a much better way holistically to address the problem of lawn care. Like, it might take a little bit more time, but it's helping preserve that wealth for everyone else, the peace and quiet, which I think it affects how much I want to live in a neighborhood, and it certainly affects how much work I can get done, including work that might have economic value, like a dollar value, for me. So I hope that I've presented this broader way of thinking about wealth. I would love to hear comments and feedback if you have anything to say, good, bad, and if you like what I have to say overall, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you!